has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Well, we still have more All-Star Game fallout after the big event in Los Angeles over the last couple of nights, Carver High. Uh, We certainly do. Next, we will hear from the winning manager, Dusty Baker, of course, in the American League. Here he is talking about the win and Stanton winning the MVP. He's also upset. He has to play him for two games tomorrow, Scotty. Here's Dusty. Seen a lot of the great power hitters of all time. Uh, where does Stanton rank for you, and does he remind you of anyone in particular? Uh, no, he really doesn't remind me of anybody. But uh, I mean, he's a great player. He's been a great player for a long time, and uh, the way he's looking, the way he's built, I mean, he should be around for an awful long time. I just uh, uh, regret that we have to play him a double hitter on Thursday. <laughs> But, but for today, we're on the same side. And, uh, yeah, you know, the good thing about that game, it was, it was clean, it was quick, and, uh, you know, we played a good game. And it was, it was fun to manage. It must have been fun to watch. Well, uh, I hope the uh, doubleheader with the Astros is better than the All-Star game that I don't care about. I mean, I'm glad I hit the bat, but I really, uh, every year I've just cheesed out by it. All of them, the NHL, NBA. Yeah. They're going to get rid of that Pro Bowl in the NFL. It's so awful. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I can't wait for Thursday and meaningful games, uh, those two in Houston being top shelf. Uh, they certainly will. Uh, last night they had that red carpet event, uh, all the players showing up leading into the game, Scotty. Now, some of these guys had outstanding suits. I mean, Martin Perez, uh, your boy Nasty Nestor Cortez, all these guys had some great threads, but... When you come not only with great threads, uh, but with a great-looking family as well, uh, you get high marks. Here's Verlander. And who would Verlander bring with him, Scotty? There's Kate. Uh, Kate at the red uh, carpet yet last uh, night going in there. uh, There's Kate. I'm hot and bothered. (laughs) Uh, uh, I might have the big one, Carver High. Kate Upton. Look at those legs. There she is. Oh, the humanity of it all. I don't even think I can continue. Look at her. She's uh, fantastic. Can you show it again? I mean, honest to Christ. One more time, Ty. Where's Kate? Go again. one more time. Uh, one more time. Oh, there she get is. my meds, Mafia. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> get my meds. Oh. There it is. Oh, the humanity. Of course, oh, uh, Verlander Jesus. did Mary not pitch Joseph. in the game, but he did at least show up. Uh, so we've got that going for him. Aaron Judge did play last night, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, Scotty. And you can never get away from the contract talk. Now, this clip uh, was really making the rounds on social media last night. Here's Aaron Judge before the game. Um, like, let's call it like it is. Uh, kind of getting sandbagged by Marley Rivera of ESPN, who brought up some kid uh, in Astoria that hopes Aaron Judge doesn't leave the Yankees. Put him in a bit of an uncomfortable spot. Here it is on ESPN. And he has a son named Jacob who came up the other day really upset from his school in Astoria. He just came up race like, are you telling me that Aaron Judge may not be a Yankee after this year? What do you have to tell to Jacob right there and tell your fans that want you to remain in a Yankee uniform? <laughs> I wasn't going to put you on the spot. I mean, we're on live TV. Yeah, no, Jacob, buddy. um, You know, we got a lot of great Yankees on this team. You know, there are a lot of great Yankees. Be here for a long time, you know, so don't don't get, hey, don't be upset. Don't be upset. Hopefully you'll be a Judge fan for life. (laughs) Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for your time. Back to you guys. Yeah, I'm not reading tea leaves. Uh, and I know everyone, uh, including our radio affiliate, Sirius XM, Sportsman F Sports Byline. Good to have you with us on Coast to Coast. Uh, I'm not reading anything into his comments on the red carpet at the All-Star game that some chick interviews him and talks about some little kid in Queens that doesn't want him to leave the Yankees. And he's like, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, uh, you can be a judge fan. Listen, all that's nonsense. Nonsense. What I need is what I said earlier. If Hal Steinbrenner Fs this up, he will have to move to Siberia. Literally, he'll have to go into hiding. 
He'll be like that chick changing her color of her hair and moving to Costa Rica that murdered her friend uh, who she thought was sleeping with her husband. I mean, you remember the chick on the run with the visas yes. and all the rest and the fake passports? Almost got That's away. That's Hal Steinbrenner if he Fs up away. the judge deal. I'm telling you. But that chick, she had a hell of an effort. She got a nose job, Carver High, and had a bandage on her nose. She went around Jeez. telling her new lover in Costa Rica that she smashed her nose surfing on her surfboard. Meanwhile, yeah. she had plastic surgery. That's a nice effort by her. She almost got away with it. Almost. almost. Uh, yesterday, we heard Liam Hendricks of the White Sox say that they were going to win the AL Central. Today, we hear from Tim Anderson. He says, we're not listening to the outside noise of people saying we're not going to win. Here's Anderson. Nobody really knows what's going on. You know, it's just a lot of people with a lot of opinions. Um, but we on the inside laughing. You know what I mean? But we, we, we understand laughing. that, you know. We're all that, laughing you know, too. When, You're when you're going through a lot of things, it's going to be a lot of opinions. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is to not really, you know, buy into those opinions. Is just stay the course and stay focused. And, uh, you know, keep rallying amongst each other as, a, as brothers and not, you know, let the noise distract us. I mean, let's yeah. calm down a little bit here. They're 500. I mean, they kind of suck. Uh, not kind of. Uh, they have absolutely sucked uh, in the first half. Uh, we, as we documented yesterday, they're going to have a big opportunity the first 20, 25 games or so out of the All-Star break to really make some ground uh, against some bad teams. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do it. Uh, we will come back. Uh, speaking of the second half, how about standings, odds to make the playoffs? Lots of baseball stuff to kick it off. Sweet. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. This actually was a positive sign from the Lakers because at least these guys are talking, trying to repair that relationship. And also, it doesn't hurt that they finally put out a positive leak on the Lakers side of this because nonstop negativity has been the tone as it pertains to Russ and L.A. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The starter for the AL is Shane, Man Shane McClanahan, but maybe Shohei will pitch at a certain point, but Shohei will lead off in that spot. And it's the first pitch of the game to Shohei Otani. The betting favorite right now is a strike or a foul tip. That's even money, plus 100. But why not take a shot? Why not sprinkle that Shohei makes some contact, puts one into play? That's plus 550. Any other outcome. We're going for plus money tonight at the All-Star Game. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. I don't know where I'm at on DeAndre Hopkins. We only played in 10 games last season. He had a nagging injury that crushed his efficiency all year. I am the definition of out on DeAndre Hopkins. There's no way I'm dealing with this. When was the last time we've seen a player who's been suspended to come back and did some damage? All right? I mean, they always seem to get that soft tissue injury because they're not quite shaped. They've been out. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. What he has done, Scott, is just, it's old school. 
man. I mean, a guy that when he throws, if I'm a relief pitcher, I'm like, all right, I got the night off, I guess, because he's not going to let me come into the game. Uh, he's just going to basically tell Magley, like, sit your ass down in the dugout. I'm going to finish this game because I can't trust the bullpen. The guy is 8, 9 innings, 100, 105, 110, 115. The Sports Grid Network. Yeah, I don't know if you caught it or not last night when Stanton hit that two-run bomb in the All-Star game, Carver High. But, uh, you know, a lot of people, they talk about, you know, Franklin or Easton batting gloves. Uh, I heard Paul O'Neill talking about him the other day that he was an Easton guy. But I noticed uh, in that game last night when he hit the home run, uh, his gloves, one said at Sports Grid, the other one said at Sports Grid TV. So the fact that we got the MVP of the All-Star game to sport our logo on his gloves – in that at bat with a home run. I mean, that is just brilliant. Nice job, Rebecca. Tremendous job, as always. Anytime you can get involved uh, with the Midsummer Classic, uh, you want to be able to do it. Uh, here we go. After the pl uh, Pete Blackburn uh, commercial airline fiasco yesterday, uh, today we got news that Juan Soto, Scotty, also unfortunately had to fly uh, commercial after declining the Nationals' $440 million contract. They said, all right, find your own way there. Uh, go fly Delta, young man. Uh, get out of here. Uh, we're not flying well, when, you out to the All-Star When game. most of them, so did you hear me probably, when he interviewed the guys in the dugout? He's like, uh, you know, you fly private, you fly private. When uh, you're dealing with uh, guys that make millions, and I'm not talking yeah. about, like, uh, the – you know, average salary in major league baseball. I'm talking about guys that are rock star making rollover millions, 20, 30, 40 million. Trust me when I tell you, they fly private jets. They do not fly a uh, commercial. They do not sit in coach. They don't even, uh, they have nothing to do with people at all, ever. Uh, they fly private jets. That's all there is to it. You heard Poppy even saying it. Fly private, fly private, fly private. They all fly <laughs> private. it up, baby. The fact that they stuck him on an uh, airline and coach is really, to me, all you need to know that they are done with him and they're going to yes. not only trade him, but I'm hearing they're going to sell the team because nobody wants anything yeah. to do with it. Uh, very possible, that's for sure. That will be the big story the next few weeks leading up to the trade. Should have never left Montreal. Uh, here's another guy uh, who's always hurt. Mets have moved Jacob DeGrom's simulated game. It was supposed to be yesterday. Now it's tomorrow after he incurred uh, mild muscle soreness around his shoulder uh, on Sunday. Oh, he did God. play catch. He did play catch on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it sounds like he's still going to throw this simulated game tomorrow, Scotty, which would then line I him up. Uh, if they wanted to then throw him in a major league game after the simulated game, that would be against the Yankees on Tuesday or Wednesday next week well, look, out at City Field. So I, I'm starting to think, and I, you know, obviously I, I like this guy. His stuff is just ruthless, and I think he's been a brilliant uh, stud starter, the best in baseball uh, over the last few years. But he has been injured uh, at great length now. And I am telling you that this guy uh, feeling discomfort in his shoulder is all you need to know that uh, I have serious reservations on whether or not he can uh, pitch for any length of time without problems. Uh, it's like this guy Strasburg with his nerve issue. He's finished. If, if DeGrom goes down again with a shoulder problem, uh, he will obviously prove to me, without a doubt, not even any reservation, that he has thrown 100 miles an hour now for five straight years and his arm is falling off. Here's what happens. I've always said this. Guys that throw 100 miles an hour don't last in Major League Baseball. Guys that throw junk, they play forever. They certainly do. Uh, Bryce Harper hopes to have pins removed next week from his thumb. Uh, get him back a little bit sooner than he hoped to the Phillies. Rob Manfred, Scotty, uh, when his little 
uh, midsummer uh, press address said that he rejects the idea that minor leaguers aren't or weren't paid a living wage. Um, Rob's nuts. Uh, as many of the minor it's leaguers pretty rough. tweeted out. It, it, you know, he was like, I made $12,000 last year. One guy tweeted. I, and look, we're, we're not talking about guys who get drafted number one overall and get signing bonuses and things like that. We're talking about the guys who on the minor league teams are the 15th, 20th, 25th men on the right. rosters. I mean, those guys, uh, there's no signing bonus. There's, Listen, there's nothing, uh, so. you know, uh, I got to tell you, it, it, it is true that it is bad. And it is a real issue and problem for Major League Baseball. I, I really believe that. But I'll say this. You basically asked for it. If this is what you choose to do for a living, is I'm going to go be a baseball player and I'm going to make it to the Major Leagues. Do you realize one in a million make it to the Major Leagues? And some kid uh, that played Little League Baseball, I, I have met a thousand kids in my life that all tell me they're going to be big league baseball players, and none of them are, literally none of them. And I have heard every dad in the world tell me their son's going to be a major league pitcher and player, and none of them have made it. Now, let me tell you something. It is a rough way to make a living, and you asked for this. You want to be a, a baseball player? Then good luck. It starts with Florida A-League. I used to do A-ball in the Florida State League. I used to do play-by-play -play in Sarasota. And do you think that you think they have money problems in the minor leagues? Try A-ball, Florida State League. They can't even buy a piece of pizza. So you ask for it if you choose this career path that you're gonna be a major leaguer and you're gonna go through the minor leagues and make it to the show, good luck. Because the entire way, you're gonna be broke. And not only that, chicks aren't gonna wanna sleep with you either because you got no money. Uh, Manfred also said yesterday that Major League Baseball is going to move ahead with advertising on the uniforms next season. So you'll see some patches. Uh, the Yankees, allegedly, Scotty, have already received a $20 million offer from an adult website uh, to become their jersey patch sponsor. Uh, I don't see Hal and the boys um, agreeing to that one. I don't... Would the Yankees put an advertisement on the beloved pinstripes? I, I don't know. Are the Yankees above that, Scotty? All the money that they have rolling in in the Bronx, are they above ruining the pinstripe look and putting a, an ad on it? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Nobody beats the Wiz. Nobody's, they will have a sponsor the on their jersey like everyone else. <laughs> Because the Yankees have sponsors on every napkin and every single toilet and every single yes. inch of Yankee Stadium is sponsored. Every single inch. The forks in the suites are sponsored. So believe me, you, the Yankees, they know how to make money more than all of you. They, they, they literally make more money than uh, the only team that can make the money that the Yankees make is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, yes, that's why they are uh, both right at the top uh, when it comes to franchise evaluations. Tony Clark is committed to staying on as the head of the Players Association, so I'm sure <laughs> down the road, Scotty, we'll Strike. get ourselves another Tony Tony Clark, Rob Manfred battle. All right, here we go. Standings at the All-Star break. We get back started tomorrow. The Yankees have the biggest division lead, Scotty. That is 13 games over the Rays of Tampa right there, the Blue Jays, Red Sox, and Orioles, the entire division, that's right, the entire division, 500 or better in the American League East. In the Central, Minnesota has a two-game lead over the Guardians of Cleveland. They have a three-game lead over the White Sox, Tigers, and Royals. We'll see you later. You are out of here. The Astros in the West have a nine-game lead over the Mariners uh, Mariners, of course, uh, 14 in a row going into the break, Scotty. The Angels continue to free fall. They are 20 and a half games back there uh, at 39 and 53. Look, I, I'd love to see the Mariners catch the Astros. Uh, screw Houston. And I look forward to tomorrow uh, in Houston, the doubleheader. I hope the Yankees win both games. Screw them. Your three wild cards if the season ended today in the AL, Tampa, Seattle, and Toronto. They would be the wild cards right now. Boston two back, Cleveland two and a half back, Baltimore three and a half back of the final uh, wild card spot in the AL. Uh, you know, I want Toronto to get in there because I think 
they still have potential as a team with their bats. And I'd love to see the Orioles get in. Uh, that'd be the best story in baseball. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need, circle. Uh, all their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I want to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. That it means more for the league where it always just means more to add Texas and Oklahoma than the Big Ten adding USC and UCLA. Texas comes in with its own network uh, that has mm. its own set of advertisers and money and everything else that they'll fold into the SEC. I know you as a perennial uh, college football playoff team contender. Will they be that in the SEC? No, but they are a team that brings that sort of prestige with them. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his, he had his moment in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, that, and he, he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. Very lucky to have Mike DeCorsi, the Sporting News, the greatest basketball writer in the world, on Coast to Coast every single week like clockwork orange. It's just a beautiful thing. Here he is, Mike DeCorsi. Mike, uh, tell me about the story of how Sean Miller ended up back in the Queen City with Xavier after all of his problems in Tucson. Well, it, it, it begins with the fact that he is an excellent basketball coach, and that is why of the coaches that were in charge of programs that were uh, initially exposed to the FBI investigation of the basketball talent game uh, back in September 2017 with uh, four different programs were exposed as a result of having uh, assistant coaches arrested on that day. And then subsequently, there were multiple programs, uh, I'd say close to a half dozen, that were brought up in various charging documents uh, and that have had, and some of them have had NCAA investigations developed since. 
almost all of those gentlemen are still in place at this point. Uh, Sean was one who lost his job. Uh, Rick Pitino lost his job uh, at, at Louisville, and that was not necessarily specifically because of what had occurred on, on these occasions relative to this investigation, but also they had just come out of uh, the investigation uh, and resolution from the NCAA relative to the uh, breaking, uh, breaking Cardinal Rules book uh, that was published and, and the investigation that came out of that. So only a couple of these coaches have lost their jobs uh, because they're, most of them have been very successful. Sean lost his, he spent a year out. I think that his year out uh, allowed him to reflect on everything that happened uh, at, at, at Arizona. Uh, some, of it was, uh, some of it was not necessarily well reported uh, uh, it going on, you know, relative to, uh, you know, what had happened. Some of it, uh, I, I think there was some inaccurate reporting that became attached to him and it became kind of a burden to him uh, when Arizona struggled uh, on the floor a little bit. They felt like it was time to move on and it obviously worked out for them. They became the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament uh, with a lot of players that uh, Miller and his staff had brought in and a few others that Tommy Lloyd brought in. Tommy did a great job with them and, and they moved on really nicely. Uh, but with Sean sitting out there and Xavier unhappy as, at, at the result of missing another NCAA tournament, especially one that they were uh, really uh, fairly well locked into in early February of last year and then declined at the end of the year. They looked at this as an opportunity to, to bring back a coach who had been highly successful and put him in a place where he could be really, uh, really successful this time because they've stepped up a level since he was there last. Uh, they're now in the Big East, which is a harder league than the Atlantic 10 that they were in in the later uh, 2000s. Uh, and so it's a it's a great opportunity for them to get a, a a really significant championship level coach. And honestly, uh, with Villanova now in a state of transition, uh, the right. window is is really a, a good one for Xavier at this point. Yeah, I actually the whole time you just mentioned Villanova, it reminds me of uh, he's he's basically in my view has a chance to be the Jay Wright of uh of what he did at villanova at xavier he's already been there he's already done it all at the highest level and now he could actually trench in there in cincinnati and just stick it out and and build something magnificent there and not worry about the big dollar the big job again be great in the big east which needs a guy like sean miller to be great in it let me read this uh, from one of your great articles. It's not that the Elam ending is terrible. It's a gimmick, a bastardization of a sport that has grown to worldwide popularity through 127 years, 30 or 40 or 48 minutes at a time. Basketball is not a sport that needs to be reinvented. Dr. Naismith's original 13 rules weren't perfect, but they put us on a path to perfection. I mean, that is great stuff. So you don't have a problem with the uh, basketball tournament or the Elam ending. You just don't want it to be a part of college basketball or the NBA. Correct. You know, the all-star game, it's kind of a cool uh, thing to put up there uh, when the NBA all-star game uses it. And certainly uh, events like the basketball tournament, uh, someone su suggested that it could be used at AAU events like the Peach Jam. I wouldn't have any problem with that, uh, getting them over, get, you know, especially when you uh, at an event like the Peach Jam, which is going on now, and uh, all of the co college basketball coaches are, are down there. Uh, watching the next generation of great American basketball talents in that space. Uh, if you wanted to do it there so that you could help uh, abbreviate the games a little bit or keep them from running too long, uh, that, that would be fine. Uh, I, but college basketball, the clock is, is a very important part of what makes basketball special. And at the end of a game, you're playing against your opponent and the clock. And that's true for the trailing team and the leading team. Uh, they both have their eye on that clock. How much time do I have to come back? How much time do I have to protect the lead I've built? And that adds to the drama. Sucking that drama away would be a massive mistake uh, for, the, for the really important parts of, of our game. I got to tell you, I almost fell over when I uh, read your piece on Malik Tillman. Uh, like, I'm like, what is going on here? My guy DeCourcy's over here. He's working an angle in soccer too. He's got it all going. I love the piece on Tillman. 
Tell people about Malik Tillman because I'm certain a lot of people have never heard of him, but now they should. Uh, what a great piece you did on him. Oh, thank you. I, I, I met him. Uh, a lot of us uh, who cover soccer uh, met him uh, in, um, in Cincinnati at the start of uh, their exhibition games for the summer uh, to try to build toward the World Cup. Uh, uh, we got a chance to see them play. Morocco there, they went on uh, as well and played, uh, they played against Uruguay in Kansas City. So they played some real World Cup teams. And uh, Malik Tillman, uh, uh, the son of an American, uh, born in Germany, raised in Germany, but uh, wanted to play for the U.S., saw an opportunity, believes he can. Uh, he, was, he played for Bayern Munich uh, last year. He was on their 2020 Champions League winning squad, didn't play a ton, but he was on that squad. A very young player, only 20, turned 20 uh, the day he came to the U.S. for the first time for that Cincinnati game. Uh, he's, he's been transferred to Rangers in Scotland, so he'll get a lot of playing time this fall. Uh, almost certainly will jump right into their starting lineup as long as he's healthy, and that'll be great for him to sort of establish uh, that he's playing and active and succeeding uh, when he, when, when they are, when it's time to form the world cup squad for, you know, let's not forget, I mean, it's coming in November. So everybody that gets on the field, August, September, October, uh, and how well they play will play into whether or not, uh, they get a chance to be on this world cup squad. But remember when they recruited him, uh, I think, I think they recruited him with a promise that if you're on the field and you're playing reasonably well, uh, you'll, you'll be on this roster, especially if it's 26 players, which we all expect. I don't think FIFA has yet made that official, but the extra three players allows you to hold a player, uh, a young developing player like Tillman who can play multiple positions. How do you think they'll do uh, in Qatar? And what did you think of Lewandowski going to Barcelona from Munich? I don't understand what, uh, what he's looking for. I mean, he's won Champions League. Uh, with with Bayern Munich, uh, he's obviously uh, scored you know, record numbers of goals in the Bundesliga. Maybe just a different challenge at some point. I, I've never been a different challenge guy. I think the game itself is a different challenge. This is my job is a different challenge every day. I don't need to change venues for it to always be a challenge. But he'll he'll have a different opportunity in in, in Barcelona. And maybe it's just you know I, I think Munich's a great city, but maybe it's just want to live in Barcelona, Scott. That's a heck of a place. <laughs> so maybe it's that. Uh, but uh, I, I think that uh, I think that it's great for Barca to have a player like him. I mean, he's a goal machine. I'll be really interested to see how his game translates into that uh, into, into into Barca. They've made a lot of changes there. Uh, they've been able to overturn their almost uh, their entire offensive squad, even though they are said to be broke. Uh, they've been buying players left and right. It's going to be a very interesting season at FC Barcelona. How about your boy, Carver High? Uh, DeCorsi over here giving us the soccer skinny. Like, what's next? He's going to start talking about Huddersfield over here. Uh, look, uh, the ladies program is still rocking, Mike. Yeah, I was I, I was covering every game, uh, on you know, not in person, but uh, covering every game through the television of their CONCACAF W Championship, which qualified them for both the World Cup next summer. Uh, that was not a high bar to clear. They just had to finish second in their group. They won the group with right. three victories. Uh, but then they, uh, the, getting the Olympic spot next year required them beating Canada. And that was, that was an interesting game because they last time they played Canada – was in the semis of the uh, of the Olympics last summer, and they lost the game. Right. Uh, we, uh, the U.S. had an almost entirely new team this time, so it was a real challenge for them, and they absolutely dominated. They have six players who were out this summer because of injury or pregnancy. Uh, so that those players coming back, the, this, the U.S. has a chance to be a really deep squad going into Australia, New Zealand next summer. Wow, that's crazy. So back, real quick, and I got 40 seconds, back to Qatar. We have waited for the U.S. men's to be in the World Cup here for a few years. It makes me sick to my stomach. Now that they're in, I'm really excited to see how they do in that group with Iran and England. How do you think they'll do? I got 30 seconds. I think that I think they have a great chance to make it out, but a lot of it comes down to that opening game against Wales November 21st. Uh, if they get a draw or a win, I think they're in good shape. If they don't, if they somehow flub that, maybe let uh, Gareth Bale lose <laughs> and lose him at some point when they can't right. afford it. 
uh, that'd be bad news. But I, I think they'll get there. I think they'll get to the round of 16. So my uh, priest is from Wales, and I gave him the finger the other day and told him, screw the Welsh in the World Cup, and screw you too, Sean. He hasn't talked to me since. <laughs> Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. But overall, I mean, this is as good a performance as you're going to find in professional sports. When you talk about like the dunk competition, this is by far better than the dunk competition at this point. These guys are getting after it and enjoying themselves. They, they definitely are. I'm not sure if there really is any all-star side event that stacks up right now to the home yeah. run derby. It's, it's in a way, it's it's simplicity is what gets the job done. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. For right now, Matt Carpenter, if you had the uh, the fortitude to pick him up off the waivers, what an unbelievable beginning to the season he is having for the New York Yankees. Batting 350, 13 home runs. I mean, this guy could not record a hit, George, for the rest of the season. You could drop him. He could get hurt. It doesn't matter. He has already boosted you so far up the standings. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I was with a heavy today, right? And I told him that USC was getting the bulk of the action on winning a national championship because they stole that coach from Norman, Oklahoma, that he's going to come to Los Angeles and win a national championship in his first year with that crappy football team. Has anyone not noticed how crappy they've been the last 10 years? The Sports Grid Network. Look who it is. Uh, the notorious OG Coach Young uh, is back to talk uh, NBA rack coming off the summer league. How about them Blazers, Coach? Hey, the Knicks look good until they ran into Portland. And all of a sudden, Portland jacked them up. And obviously, they played well, even without Shaden Sharp. Brandon Williams uh, played well. MVP, uh, the other guy was MVP of the league. They just showed that they have that grit and that toughness. And when you get into summer league, Pharrell, as much as everybody wants to talk about the first year guys, it's the second year guys that seem to make the big difference in regards to teams winning or losing in summer league. So, I mean, I thought Quentin Grimes played great. And you and I have seen Quentin play a lot uh, in New York. Are they going to flip him in this deal to get Mitchell? 
It looks like he's going to be the centerpiece. Imagine that. Here's the reason why, folks. R.J. Barrett is eligible for an extension. He wants the max, and Utah has no interest in paying it. So what does that mean? We got to go find other younger talent on the Knicks roster, and it starts with Quentin Grimes. Pharrell is right. Quentin looked really good in Summer League. He came into the NBA as a straight 3 and D guy, but he showed really deep range in Summer League, and he showed a surprising ability to create his own shot. So he's the type of guy, young asset on a rookie-scale contract, that Danny Ainge is going to want to be part of for Spider Mitchell. So I do think Quentin Grimes will probably be the centerpiece of the trade along with other young players from New York. But it, honestly, for real, it's going to come down to draft picks. The Knicks have eight draft picks that they could trade. Four of them have come via trade. Four of them can be unprotected. The ones you want to look at is the four unprotected picks that the Knicks have that they can move in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. All right, so, uh, you know, I don't deny that Quentin has talent, okay? Fair enough. But when he played with the Knicks uh, and, and, you know, in the regular season games, because he got burned, and I thought, and I'm just saying this, like when he's playing in the summer league against rookies and two-year guys, I mean, the guy looks like Kobe Bryant. When he plays in the regular season with vets and the, you know, Thibodeau seven, if you will, if he puts him in for burn, I thought the guy uh, just chucked so many bad shots. It wasn't even funny. Like he was out there ball hogging and hero balling, and I'm not even tripping. I saw that guy shoot so many bad shots in the rotation with vets as opposed to how great he looked in the summer league. I thought I was watching two different people. Which one is he? I think he's the one right in the middle. I think he's better than what he did as his rookie year. And here's the thing, folks. Even when he got off and had a couple of good stretches, he had two injuries during the year, including one that shut him down for the rest of the regular season. So he is somewhere in the middle. I think he's more than a 3 and D guy. Do I think he's the guy in summer league? No. But is he a building block for a young team that's starting over? Yes, he could be that. But like I said, this has more to do with the draft picks that the Knicks can give, uh, you know, Utah in a trade. But he did show flashes that he could be a player. The problem is this, Pharrell, and you know Tibbs as well as I do. He don't play young kids. I mean, let's just, let's just yeah. call it like it is. He will play his Taj Gibsons, his Nerlens Noels, his Julius Randles, his Fournier's, his Derrick Roses, and guys right. like Deuce McBride and Grimes and Obi Toppin, and sometimes quickly didn't get the burn. So it'll be interesting to see. But here's the thing. With your New York, do you want to gut your depth to go get Donovan Mitchell? That's why I think this could be more about the draft picks Maybe give them more unprotected picks and try to keep some of that young talent so you're not killing your entire bench and your depth. Is Mitchell Robinson involved in this? And then what is the talk, this absurdity about Brody and the Knicks uh, getting together and being lovers? Uh, are we really going down that road with the Lakers to get Russell Westbrook to play at the Garden? Please spare me. Yeah, I, I wish, I hope you're wrong, but we both saw the same tweet. In regards to that part about Brody coming to the Knicks, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. Flat out, salary cap. You take him, you move someone like Julius Randle, who's got two more years on a deal, Fournier, if you can't trade him, two more years on a deal, and turn around and get Brody so that you have him for one year and you get out of the contract in the year and you have more salary cap space to make the next move. Right. That's the thought process, you know, I, I, I do have with, with Brody. As regards to Mitchell Robinson, it should be interesting. Hartenstein, the kid from the Clippers, who had a really good year, signed as a free agent, and they signed Jericho Sims uh, to a two-year, I do believe a two- or a three-year deal. He looked pretty good in summer league. He, he, even though he makes he, Even though he shoots the ball, makes Chris... Dudley looked like Mark Price from the free throw line. He's so damn awful. But when you look at it, those are three centers. 
So could you move one of them in a trade? Maybe, but Mitchell Robinson could be a young tradable piece that could work as a shot blocking big in a uh, in a city like Utah. So I, I, you know, I talked at great length the other day, and I, I haven't uh, talked to you in a minute about uh, LeBron playing with DeRozan in the Drew League, and I said some things on the air that uh, people didn't like. Uh, and as you know, uh, they can all have a ham sandwich with mayonnaise on it because I don't give an F what anyone thinks of what I say on this show. Trust me, you, God. Like, my own family hates me. Everyone hates me. So get used to it. I'd rather have you hate me than dislike me. But my point was, if I run the Lakers, and obviously LeBron runs the Lakers, not Jeannie and not Rob. They don't run anything. They, they should be lovers because they don't do anything. Uh, LeBron runs the team. But why is he playing in that Drew League? For God's sake, the guy missed 35 games, whatever it was. Davis played in 40 games. And I got this guy playing in some show off uh, in a hot gym in Los Angeles. I don't care how cool the Drew League is. I know it's badass, but to me, it ain't built for LeBron James and DeRozan. I don't know what they're doing there when he can't even stay healthy on the floor in the NBA and they can't even make the play in game. Why is that guy playing pickup basketball and dunking all over the place and showing off? when he shouldn't be playing in that. I, honestly, if I own a team, I'd be like, what the F are you doing, bro? Uh, for real. What's yeah, next? He's going question. skiing? How about, right. is he gonna jump motorcycles? What's next? No. Well, yeah, you know, we don't want no 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 Jay Williams thing happen with cliff him. Cliff diving? Like How about cliff diving? Yeah. How about some I, cliff I don't diving? I that's in his contract, and you know brothers don't be doing no skiing. Let's just keep it real when it comes to that stuff. Now, in regards to LeBron, <laughs> I'm gonna say this. Have they been talking about LeBron lately? No. They've been talking about KD, Kyrie, Steph's got the ring, can he run it back, Donovan Mitchell. So LeBron is like, man, y'all ain't talking about me for a minute. Hmm, how can I get myself some media attention? I know, I'll go to the Drew League, and all of a sudden that becomes big. Here's the thing, DeRozan and LeBron, is it true that they only won by like, a bucket like that's all they won their game by i mean what what was the line in the drew are we gonna have, is FanDuel gonna now put the drew league lines out and make us bet on it now because lebron's showing up listen lebron i get it you want to make people know that you're back you're good at the end of the day if i'm the lakers i'm like bro let's pump our brakes we need you from october to june we don't need you playing in some summer league in july what about the sports grid TBT team next year where we go, uh, Coach and Pharrell go look for that millones. Hey, man, listen. I mean, <laughs> as, lo as long as Carver High is the GM, I'm in it. So if Carver High is the GM, I can throw a couple of elbows. We'll see who we can pull. The problem is, is no offense. So they, you know, we have to bring Mafia in. We got a bunch of short dudes in here. I mean, maybe Kevin Walsh can step in. Donnie right side, he can't even go on all the rides at Great Adventure. He's so short. So we got to figure out who we're going to bring. Ben Steve, he's another shrimp. So we got to figure out some other guys. Because if we're rolling into the TBT, we need some height on that team, if you know what I'm saying. We're going to get Mafia, uh, the dust uh, and cobwebs off of Mafia after he won four championships. And now at 6'5", 240, we're going to get him out of the closet like a broom and get him back out on the floor. Our training center will be at the Pharrell Adele uh, Bell Works. We'll, we'll train in that basketball court there, getting ready for the basketball tournament. All right, so uh, let me ask you. Uh, we haven't heard a thing about – you know, Kyrie and KD moving. You've even heard that big trade scenario of both of them going, one to the Lakers, one to either the Warrior, the Miami, and all of a sudden Toronto, all this other nonsense. We have heard now that they're both going back to the Nets. It's gone from they're both getting traded to they're go gonna stay with the Nets. Which is it? Are they getting moved or are they gonna play in Brooklyn? Honestly, I think one of them is going to get moved, and I think the one that's going to get moved now is Kyrie. The one trade that we, the one we were thinking about, was of course him going to Phoenix, and of course DeAndre Ayton signing that offer sheet kind of messed that whole thing up, whether the Nets wanted him or not. Because even if the Nets didn't want him, they could have rerouted DeAndre Ayton to another destination with a third team. So now that puts a Mike Rich. You talked about it. We said it last week. January 15th, that is the day that I would look at in regards to trades with Kevin Durant when players that are eligible at sign this year can get moved. So whether it's Portland, 
you know, uh, moving some of their assets, whether it's Toronto moving some of their assets, Thaddeus Young, so on and so forth, other players, whether it's Miami, look at that date to see what's going on. Now, watch Miami, folks. Miami, they don't have the players that, that a team would want in regard to, like, Utah or Miami for a trade. So they have to take some of their other players and route them other places to try and get first-round picks. So if you see someone like a Duncan Robinson, which I can't believe it, he does have value. If he gets you get a first-round pick for a Duncan Robinson, then know that Miami is up to something because they're trying to accumulate picks to get more so that they can turn around and get someone like Donovan Mitchell. But their focus is Kevin Durant. Do you believe that uh, Keegan Murray will be as good in his rookie season in Sacramento as we saw him play and win the MVP of the Summer League? How good do you think he's going to be against vets? Here's my issue with Keegan Murray, and it has nothing to do with his game. It's got to do with his teammates. First off, he plays the same position as Demonis Sabonis. So what are you going to do? Are you going to bring Murray off the bench? He's not good enough to play a three. Maybe he plays a four, it's bonus to the five. But then you have to deal with Davion Mitchell, De'Aaron Fox, and you got Harrison Barnes to three. So my issue is, is he may not get the touches necessarily to make an impact. But I will tell you a rookie that I was really impressed with throughout Summer League that not a lot of people are talking about. First team Summer League, Tari Eason out of Houston. Stat stuffer can score, needs yeah. to work on the jumper, defends like crazy. He's like 101 point sleeper to get rookie of the year. And I will say this, this kid will win at least one, if not two, defensive players of the year in his career. Wow. Yeah, I saw him play. I, I thought the summer league was awesome as always. And now I'm watching TBT. I got a game tonight, the ballers. I know we got wrecked the other night. Hopefully we'll turn it around for you tonight, coach. I know you said I didn't play any defense in that game on Monday night. Thanks a lot for the our post game script there. Uh, all right, Coach John. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Do you think a Big 12, Pac-12 merger would have made sense? No, I don't. I don't. Because when you add more teams in, Kevin, you're going to divvy up more pieces of the pie. It's the reason why you see these big guys leaving. And we're looking right now at these Pac-12 teams, Kevin, and saying to yourself, what are you actually bringing to the table to the Big 12? Apparently not enough. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. A Yerfi or a Nerfi, Kev? Well, the Nerfi is the favored side tonight at minus 136 to stay under that half run total in the opening frame. Do you agree that maybe we won't see a run early on? I agree that it should be the favorite. I think if you made me bet it, though, I actually might be inclined to yep. touch the yes. I, I, yep. I do. I look at the National League lineup and it's all righties. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harrell with your daily numbers game from Inverness, Scotland, heading to the British Senior Open. But we focus on gaming and we focus on Florida and look at the briefing schedule for the appellate court in the case about the constitutionality of the Indian Gaming 
Ruling Act, which has been held unconstitutional, about 45 days of legal gaming before the courts shut it down. And now they're in a position of trying to figure out whether or not they will allow it. But the briefing schedule is in the summer, well into the fall, and even into next year. So no avail on the speed of this. Same time, FanDuel DraftKings estimated $37 million overall to put into this pot to try to generate dollars for signatures. Those signatures didn't work either. And at the end of the day, there is no process for gaming that will involve Florida in the near future. They love it, the fans. Today in Carver High history. We start all the way back in 1958 today. Tigers pitcher Jim Bunning pitches a no-hitter against the Red Sox. 65, Yankee pitcher Mel Stottlemyre. The inside the park grand slam for old Mel. 1970, Dodger pitcher Bill Slinger. Singer, he throws a no-hitter against the Phillies. 1976, Hank Aaron, the final homer of his career, number 750. 1980, Tom Watson, one of the all-time greats, wins the third of his five British Open titles. 86, the Shark, boy, do they hate him now. Greg Norman wins his first major championship. He won the British uh, five-stroke win for him. 1991, Mike Tyson accused of raping Miss Black America contestant Desiree Ooh. Washington. 1994, one month after the white Bronco chase, OJ offers 500 grand for a reward for evidence of his ex-wife's killer. How'd that work out for 1997? <laughs> Justin Leonard comes back from five strokes down to win the British Open by three strokes. Just this past weekend, Justin Leonard put me to sleep on the couch with his coverage on NBC of the Open Championship. 2000, the leaders of Salt Lake City's bid to win the Olympics are, are, are indicted for bribery, fraud, racketeering. Ben Curtis won the British in 03. Potty Harrington won it in 08. Potty. And then 2014, Rory won it, Scotty. Rory, Rory in 2014. And 2021, a year ago today, the Bucks beat the Suns. NBA Finals, that's right. They went late last year. Here it is, game six. Booker turns, shoots, fires. Shot won't go. Tucker the rebound. And that'll do it. It's over. The Bucks have done it. The long wait has ended. After a half century, the Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. He nice. had 50 in that game. And uh, by the way, we yeah. gave a, a kid, our boy Gilly, the other night, uh, put a 50 burger on the ballers. A kid Ooh. had 50 against us. It was embarrassing. I think I he slept with my wife, too. <laughs> I wish they still I played them in the middle of July. I wish they played them in the middle of July.